Hello, and welcome to the Movie Universe. I'm your host, Movie Fan. Today for Flashback Monday, I'm going to be doing something really special. I'm going to be talking about Bulk and Skull. And yes, I do mean Bulk and Skull from the hit series, Power Rangers. Now, if you're a Power Rangers fan like me, you know who they are. These guys were the comedy relief characters. However, what most people don't bother to think about is, these guys were the most evolved characters throughout the entire series. In order to understand what I'm talking about, we're going to have to start from the beginning. In the beginning, there was Bulk and Skull, the school bullies, who every now and again for at least a couple episodes actually had punk girlfriends and actually had a small gang. But of course, as we all know, these guys always were sidestepped by the Rangers themselves. They always used their wits and their abilities to outmaneuver them at every turn. That and every now and again the teachers would catch them and give them detention. Pretty much for all of Season 1, it's moments like this. The Power Rangers are trying to do something to help people out, that sort of thing. And Bulk and Skull come in, try to ruin everything for them, like Zack's birthday party, stuff like that. And of course, the Rangers always outmaneuver them, make them look like chumps, and they don't have to throw a punch in order to do so. Of course, one of my favorite moments is when Zack challenges Bulk to a dance-off. Then when Season 2 began, Bulk and Skull are saved by the Power Rangers, and they're inspired to try to find out who they really are. Bulk comes up with all these stupid gadgets that never work, and they pretty much get nowhere all the time. For this whole season, they're trying to find out who the Power Rangers are, and at the same time, there are moments where they just act like their usual bully selves. But there was actually two episodes that really showed that there's a little bit more to Bulk and Skull than we first thought. In the three-part episode, Ninja Encounter, where we meet Rocky, Adam, and Aisha, there's a scene where they try to save a runaway baby. They fail, but the point is, they still tried to save the baby. And later on, that baby is left alone because his dad is kidnapped by Goldar, along with Rocky, Adam, and Aisha. And believe it or not, they step up and try to take care of him. Nobody made him do it. They automatically were concerned about the little guy, and they did what they could to look out for him. And they actually did all right, too. Later on in the episode, when a ranger is not a ranger, they do actually find out who the rangers really are. But the rangers got their memories erased, and they realized that they had to do what they could to try to get their memories back. Because without the Power Rangers, Earth is doomed. So they stepped up, squared off with the monster, and believe it or not, they actually did succeed in getting the rangers' memories back. Meanwhile, they lose their memories as to who the rangers are. And for the rest of the season, they're trying to find out who the rangers are once again with no success. Then when Season 3 rolled around, they decided to join the Junior Police Academy. It is at this point, that's where they're really starting to grow up. Mostly because of their mentor, Lieutenant Stone, trying to make them into good cops. During this whole season, you see them do their Police Academy training. Meanwhile, they're still going to school. So you still got their shenanigans going on. But there's a slight twist here. You start to see more of their shenanigans during the end credits. But they're not going after the Power Rangers anymore, and they're not acting like bullies anymore. Every now and again, they act a little macho, but that doesn't happen very often anymore. And that's pretty much how Season 3 goes. By the time Power Rangers Zeo came along, they're still in the Junior Police Academy, and they're still going to school, of course. And for Zeo, there's really not much else to say. Then when Turbo comes around, they get turned into chimps. And apparently the reason behind this little twist was because they tried to create a spin-off show. But it didn't pan out, so halfway through, they're back to being human again. And because they had disappeared for so long, obviously they're not cops anymore. So now, they're just guys trying to get a job. And they're failing miserably at every turn. So much so that the new rangers really feel sorry for them. Then came Power Rangers in Space, where they meet Professor Fomonius. He's a squirrely yet brilliant professor who's on a mission to try to find aliens. He lives in his RV looking up and down Angel Grove to try to find any signs of alien life. Funny thing, the professor doesn't seem to realize that aliens have been attacking Angel Grove for the past five years. Because Bulk and Skull literally have no job, they join him on his quest. And every now and again, they do actually run into the alien monsters that were set down by astronomers. Then in the final episode, 
Countdown to Destruction. Bulk and Skull do something completely unexpected. When Astronema demands that the Rangers turn themselves over to her, Bulk and Skull immediately step up and say, I'm a Power Ranger. Basically, it turns into a whole I'm Spartacus thing. But then, the Rangers show themselves, they morph, and then they start fighting off the aliens. And Bulk and Skull rally the civilians and lead a revolution. This whole scene has been classified as their most defining moment because they really stepped up for this one. And it definitely shows how much they've changed ever since they were bullies. After Power Rangers in Space, we move on to Lost Galaxy. I've already talked about this. That's where the Professor and Bulk manage to get on the space station to go try to find a new world, but Skull misses the flight. And sadly, there really isn't much to say about this. Obviously, Skull's not there. It's just Bulk and the Professor. They are officially nothing more than background characters that seem to work at a juice bar. After that, they were never seen again until the Forever Red episode from Power Rangers Wild Force. Their scene is very brief, and I mean very brief, but it's very memorable to me because what happens is Andros calls Tommy from the juice bar that Bulk and Skull happen to own, or maybe they just work for, they weren't very clear on that, and it is just priceless to see Bulk and Skull go to him and hand him the phone and say, Sir, the phone calls for you. And they're saying it in the most sincere manner, like they have the greatest, utmost respect for him. Which is hilarious to me because, let's not forget, back when they were bullies, they were just calling him a geek all the time, along with the other rangers. But obviously now the word is out as to who Tommy Oliver was, and still is. So now they have the greatest, utmost respect for him. And that's the only time you see Bulk and Skull there. Of course, there is one more time where you see Bulk, and that was Power Rangers Samurai, where he's trying to teach his nephew Spike how to be a samurai. What makes him think he knows? I don't know. But pretty much it's just the usual shenanigans. Spike is a goof, just like his dad, Skull. And Bulk, he's not a very good teacher. Not that he's not trying, it's just he can't teach to save his life. During that whole season, you could say Bulk pretty much reverted back to being his goofy self along with his nephew, but at least he wasn't being a bully anymore. And either way, it's still pretty memorable. And I cannot forget the final episode of Power Rangers Super Samurai, where Skull comes to pick up Spike, and you see him drive up in a limo. Obviously, he's done really well for himself, and for the first, and officially the last time, Bulk actually calls Skull by his first name, Eugene. It was great to see them back together again. I just wish they could have done more with it. Because all you get is a little banter between the two. And while Skull and Spike are driving away in their limo, they hit their heads on the sign as they're waving goodbye. And that's where the Bulk and Skull saga ends. Now, if you've been paying close attention, you can plainly see that Bulk and Skull were the most evolved characters throughout the entire series. The Power Rangers, we've had different ones over the years, but their character profiles didn't really change much. You had different people, so of course you had some slightly different personalities. But deep down, they were all pretty much the same. Bulk and Skull, on the other hand, they evolved from bullies to investigators trying to find out who the Rangers are, to Junior Academy police officers, to chimps, if you want to call that an evolution, to guys trying to find a job, to assistants trying to find proof of aliens, and in the final episode, revolutionaries. Obviously, with Lost Galaxy, we got nothing. But again, from Power Rangers Wild Force, I still get a kick out of the Forever Red special. It was a priceless moment because I keep thinking about how they acted back then when they knew him. And now here they are, grown up and actually being nice to him. With Power Rangers Samurai, there really wasn't much of a point in having Bulk there other than nostalgia reasons. Because like I already said, he just reverted back to his goofy self, only he wasn't a bully anymore. But still, the glory days of Bulk and Skull were the greatest. And as far as I know, these are the only bullies in television history who had their own theme song. Oh no, look who's here. Bulk and Skull. Hi girls. How about that double date we talked about? Yeah. <laughs> what about? Sorry guys. And that, my friends, is my review on Bulk and Skull the two most legendary bullies in television history. If you don't believe me that they've evolved over the years, why don't you take a look at a few episodes from Mighty Morphin Power Rangers all the way to Power Rangers in Space. You'll see. This is Movie Fan, signing off.